Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Decoding Yoga. I'm Ellie, and today I have my dear friend and colleague Inga with me from France. You are in Paris right now. So very happy to have you here, Inga, in this last episode of February. Can you believe it? Two months of this year are gone. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Ellie. Thank you for having me here again. Oh, this is just crazy that it's it's end of February, like the, the last weeks. And yeah, uh, the year has definitely started quickly and it's just flying by. But I'm good. How are you? <laughs> very good. Very good. So today we will finish with the series that we started in January when we decided to decode some yoga cues, the most common yoga cues that we hear in classes. And we chose to keep this one, um, the one that we're going to be talking today, as the last one, because kind of like wrap up everything that we have been talking for two months, which is practice with awareness. It's very common that when people go to an asana class, the teacher will say this quite often, practice with awareness, listen to your body, listen to your inner teacher. And honestly... <laughs> When I ask this question to our students that come to Sampurna to do the teacher training course, whether it's in person or online, and I ask, guys, what do you think this means? I would say 95% of them, of them have no clue. What does it mean? <laughs> and they have been practicing yoga for a while, asanas at least, and they are training to become yoga teachers. So Inga, for you, what does it mean, practice with awareness? <laughs> it's it's interesting yeah and when we were discussing right about these cues which ones to talk about for the the podcast I think um already this one that we chose to talk about was causing me a bit of confusion because what do we mean by it and I think the intention behind it is beautiful practice with awareness it, it sounds beautiful and you can kind of hear it in classes but I think it it requires a lot of um, self-inquiry, right? And and it's quite an advanced cue already, like practice with awareness. And I think if if teachers just throw it out as a standalone cue, just a, almost as a filler word, mm -hmm. leading. At, I, I think as teachers, you know, there are so many things we we say during classes that could be better not said almost. <laughs> But I think this practice with awareness can often be just thrown out just to fill the space. And then it loses that bit of uh, in intention and the power that it could have. Um, so, so I think that if we are using a cue like that, then it should come with other things in that class, right? That the teacher should really guide us through what they have in mind for us in that maybe class to practice for if it has a theme it has if it has a focus so that our attention could be guided someplace because this practice with awareness can be so so broad and vague that maybe some people will get confused but maybe that confusion is as well practicing with awareness getting confused and not knowing what things are also mm -hmm. part of a practice isn't it what what about you how do you think about it and how it's made you feel in classes. It's, it's interesting because when I started thinking about this cue and how to present it in 15 minutes in this episode, I was just, I will, I went a little bit back like, okay, what actually awareness is in general, not only in mm. yoga, awareness, what does it mean? And I came to the conclusion that awareness is living in the here and now open to the infinite possibilities of the present moment. And we, as humans, haven't learned to be in the present moment. We don't know how to be either. We are in the past, dwelling for the past, or worrying about the future, but not exactly paying attention to what is happening now. And I recall a book that I read years ago that I always said it was like a before and after is the, the power of now. Yes. When I read that book, actually the book teach you about awareness because awareness is pay attention to the temperature of your body, to the words that are coming out of your mouth. They're not just random sounds. It's really 
pay attention of how you move your body is is really and I remember one exercise that comes in that book is to go outside and watch a, and pay attention to a, a tree and I'm like how much can mm. you can you can look at a tree and I spent 20 minutes in the tree looking at the tree and I'm like wow it's the first time in my life that I actually do this so it's doing that so I started um thinking in that concept when it comes to the practice and as you said sometimes as yoga teachers we have learned just to throw words because our teachers also say it, and students also get used to only listen words just go and move and out but when you actually ask them like how do you feel what that make you feel people don't even know I, I even ask because I teach anatomy right so I ask my students where do you feel this pose Mm. And it take them some time to actually, huh, I never thought about it. Or they say everywhere. I'm like, mm, it's not meant to be felt everywhere. There's one specific area that you feel it a little bit more, a little bit different. So this is when it comes to my mind. The practice with awareness is being present in my sensations, my emotions. How am I feeling? Huh? It's interesting that it may, is making me feel sad or upset, or which is a topic of another um, podcast that I'm going to be talking about emotions, getting stuck somewhere, right? Um, but it's really paying attention of what am I feeling? What am I doing? Where am I moving from? Mm. And unfortunately, in yoga classes, usually we don't educate our students. And I've been talking about this for long. So that's for me practicing with awareness. Now, how do you be very um, specific? How would you advise teachers and practitioners to start practicing awareness when it comes to the yoga practice? Not only the asanas, because let's remember the meditation, pranayama, and everything that we do during the day is yoga because yoga is a lifestyle. So what would be your advice? Like how how we can do this in a practical way? How can I develop or start developing my awareness? Wow. <laughs> Isn't that a lifelong practice? Or basically that's mm. what this yoga practice is, I'm thinking. That's why it's so powerful, so necessary and... and um, so necessary at this moment in time when our attention is always somewhere but it's scattered in a thousand places and 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 it, it's it's very difficult right to actually be present it sounds so simple but it's a terribly complicated concept as a student well, you have a very powerful tool sorry to interrupt have, you have a very yes. powerful tool which is the breath exactly and exactly. in april we are dedicating the entire month with you talking about the breath Yes. So can you probably give us a, a very... A little preview. <laughs> a preview, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we're not going to talk about this today, but yeah. how, how focusing on the breath can bring us back to the present moment. Yeah. So absolutely, and that was exactly what I was thinking, that it's, it's so complicated, but we do have um, two incredible tools that are accessible for us at any given moment, and yoga really brings them in together. And I think that is the magic of yoga. That's what really happens when we step on our mats is the fact that we, we start moving. So that takes our attention to the body. The body is always in the present moment and moving in a certain way, holding a pose, you're creating sensations and maybe they're unpleasant sometimes, they're difficult, challenging or something, you know, you're falling out of your balance or something, but it's physical and it pulls you to feel yourself. Remember that, you're a physical body and maybe through that day, you are just always in your head. Your body is just an afterthought, just gets you from A to B, right? Or you haven't even moved the whole day. So the body is one thing that we can always rely on, having the sensory ability to feel ourselves. And the next one is the breath, of course. And again, they can sound so cliche, but, but, but they're so powerful. Movement and breath and... And the fact that you can remember that you are breathing, again, I think it's, it's just that both the body and the breath are in the present moment. So it pulls us back here and now. And then it gives us that space where we can tap into that awareness to become aware and the witness of our experience and see what are we finding there. What am I feeling? Not what I should feel. Or maybe even noticing that there are all these ideas, what I should be feeling, 
am I doing this wrong? All that chatter. But I think it's through our body and the space that our breathing, when we connect it, um, allows us to access that then we can find the ability within us to observe and practice with awareness. Yeah. Awesome. And I've been practicing the exercises that you taught us. And and it's it's so powerful. When when um in a just a regular day situation and I get sad or upset or you know, whatever emotion I'm feeling, usually that is because your body remembers something that you yeah. felt before. So you will go at least your body will go to the past. And I'm like, oh, this is something that I know. So when I I don't wanna be in that um state in that emotion I come back to the breath I'm mm. breathing now and this is what is happening now so I have the opportunity to do something different right so the breath is is definitely key and that's why we are going to dedicate the entire month in April to talk about that and I would like to come back to the body because all these two months we have been decoding cues behind Or, or we have been decoding cues to find the meaning behind them. And we have emphasized the anatomical part because we both teach anatomy. We both relate to that. So coming back to the body is like, okay, what does it mean protecting the knee? What muscles are you going to engage, activate where the movement has to come So the knee is quiet and happy. How come can I um, engage my glutes in a back bend so my knees don't go out? So I'm not squeezing as much. So my knees will go in abduction, but they stay here while I'm extending the hip joint. So all those episodes, if, by the way, you haven't heard them, if you haven't listened to the previous episodes, please go there. We have eight episodes, seven without uh, this one when we talk about different cues and teaching our students, as you said, like, what are you feeling? I cannot tell you. A lot of students always say like, what am I supposed to feel here? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> I am not in your skin. I can tell you what I feel. I can tell you where this pose presents a challenge to me, to my body, to my skeleton. So educating those sensations and giving, I always say giving back the responsibility to the student. This is your practice. I cannot tell you if it's amazing, if it was bad, if it will bring emotions out, if you if it will hurt. I cannot tell you that is your practice. So it's you who have to be there and you have to tell me. <laughs> Otherwise I won't I won't know as a teacher, right? No, completely. That it's As much as it is a guided experience, as much as as a teacher, sometimes you fall into a trap that you want to be liked by everyone, right? That everyone would have an amazing class. You have to re realize that even if you did everything you possibly could, you can't know how pe a person is feeling, what they're bringing on the mat with them. And most often, even if some people might not enjoy your class or something, you maybe might even tell you or ask you about something that like, I really didn't like this or this really upset me today or something, it's just going to be their own personal practice to, to see that, to be with that and to question themselves. Is this really about the pose that I chose to do right? Or is there something underneath it? And probably there's other things underneath it. And I think both for teachers and students, what um, this practice invites us to, to be is to be open and to be so curious about all of it. But, but it's hard, right? Because we can be, mm, we judge so many of our feelings and so many of our sensations. And we very quickly label, this is good, this is bad, this is discomfort, mm -hmm. this is unpleasant and we chase the pleasant and of course we need to um you know that's that thing practice with awareness to make sure that practice nourishes you you don't push through the pain so but it's an individual practice as much as it can be guided by however amazing teacher i think the teachers that um Well, I aspire to be that teacher is that, as you said, to give back the responsibility to the students, but also the power back to them that they would start gaining trust within themselves that I can feel and get to know my body in the best way than anyone else. And the teacher can help me. 
but to feel like reconnected with yourself that I listen to myself the most and what a beautiful way it becomes to practice then that you're not reliant on on others to to see how you feel and what you can explore in that moment exactly and as we always said yoga is a lifestyle it's something that we have to bring on and off the mat so we really hope that these episodes that these uh, talks that we have had during these previous months will help you to achieve that to at least be aware that we are not aware all the time right so Inga thank you so much it's been lovely to talk to you I really look forward to have you um, again here with me I really enjoy our talks and always time flies when we are together um, but it thank does. you so much for your inputs <laughs> I I wish you a beautiful beautiful um, rest of the week and I will talk to you very soon and to all of you that are listening to this episode thank you so much for your support for your questions for your comments also for watching in YouTube and leaving your comments Inga big hugs from Costa Rica to France <laughs> Thank you so much, Ellie. Thank you for having me. Bye. See you soon. Mm -hmm. Hi, and thank you so much for watching this video. After so many years of teaching in yoga teacher training courses, I realized that a lot of people don't understand exactly what yoga is, or they have a lot of misconceptions and doubts. And that's why I created the podcast Decoding Yoga. Every week, I share a new episode with you where I talk about cues, about postures, about yoga as a lifestyle, about this myth, these doubts, these um, ideas that we have been repeating in yoga classes, and we don't even know what they mean, we don't understand what those cues mean, and we keep repeating them. So we have repeated so many times that we believe they're true. So I hope you can join me in the next episode. You can watch the video here or you can look for the show in any of the audio platforms available. And if you have a question, a doubt, you have heard a myth about yoga and you want some clarification, let me know below this video and I will be happy to create a program to reply to you. Thank you.